Well, good morning and welcome to this morning's uh, Sunday service. It's great to have you here with us, joining us online, wherever you may be. I hope and trust that you are all well and more importantly that you are staying close to God and our Saviour Jesus Christ and all the while being fed and uh, nourished by Him, inspired by the Word of God and uh, fed by the Holy Spirit. So let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your goodness, your redemption of our lives, for showing us the way home. To guide us on the way, you raised up prophets and teachers, and then you came to us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again for our sake. As you lead us into freedom from sin, as your spirit forms the life of Christ in us, we are drawn into greater and deeper joy, and so we offer you our thanks and praise. Gracious God, this morning as we lift our hearts, our minds, indeed our very lives to worship you, we declare our intent to do so now and forever. And yet, Father, we come to you knowing that we have failed to obey the call of Jesus to love you and one another with our whole being. We have denied your presence, ignored the voice of your Holy Spirit, and we have forgotten your love for us and all that you have made. Forgive us, we pray. We come to you now, O God, reaching up to you in our sorrow, even as you reach down to us with healing and reconciliation. So God of all mercy, give us grace today to make a fresh start. As we hope to be forgiven, teach us how to forgive and lead us forward in a new life, wholly committed to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so as we pray these things, we realize that on this day, as on every day, you stand arms wide open to embrace us, heart wide open to receive us. Your spirit is poured out upon us, restoring the relationship between human and divine, between heaven and earth. And so we hear this good news and we offer you our heartfelt thanks. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So our reading this morning is from John chapter 14 and verses 15 through to 31. And I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. Jesus promises the Holy Spirit, beginning in verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me any more. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord... Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away 
and I'm coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not say much more to you, for the Prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes, so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. So come now, let us leave. This is the word of the Lord. I'm now going to invite Reverend Johnson McCoddy to bring us this morning's message. Thank you, Johnson. Um, good morning to you all. I uh, just want to thank you, Chris, for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, um, as we, um, we are remembering that uh, we are in the coronavirus season or a period, uh, we want to also thank God that um, we are hearing positive news, especially on other places where now people are now going back to work and here and there people are starting to meet together. Even in small numbers, that's really something positive we need to thank God about. Let us pray. Uh, Jesus, you said you will not leave us as orphans. We want to thank you, God our Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, who is here with us. Let us worship the one who loves us. Let us worship the one who nurtures us. Let us worship the one who challenges us. Let us worship the one who calls us out of loneliness and into community. We love that because we are a community of believers and want to thank God for that oneness when we come together and fellowship together. Thank you, Father, for this wonderful opportunity that we can still worship you. Even online, we can talk to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's so amazing how you work among us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we are <clears throat> continuing with our service, I'm going to share with you on the theme, Always With Us. We are no longer orphans. We are no longer orphans. God is always with us. We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord and Savior. We believe in the Holy Spirit and the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. As Christians, we believe God to be best directed as a trinity. On this Sunday, we turn our attention to the Holy Spirit, who is God in us, to comfort, to convict, to remind and to renew, to guide and guard, to sustain and support, to keep us in every way. Come, let us take a closer look at what the Holy Spirit can do for us and can do for you. The context of our scripture is what might be called the upper room discourse of Jesus. If that sounds too formal, how about Jesus' farewell instruction to his students? That's what we have in John chapter 13 to chapter 17. John's instruction to his infant church, sort of his last will and testament. The whole thing began as a festive celebration of Passover, but soon the mood at the table changed as Jesus began to tell his friends some very disturbing things. He told them that he was going to leave them. And what was worse, he told them that he was about to put to death at the hands of his enemies. What a power of blooming descended upon their hearts upon hearing those words. How would they ever manage without him? He had done such wonderful things and said such wonderful things during the few short months or years they had been with him. His teaching, his might deeds had transformed their lives. What would they ever do without his strengthening presence beside them? Then it was that Jesus said something very strange. 
They wondered how they would get along without him. So the disciples were bewildered, grief-stricken. Their minds were caught on the paralyzing thought that they were going to lose Jesus. It was hard, most impossible, almost impossible for them to even hear Jesus when he told them that he was going away physically. Have you ever felt that way? Outmade by life, up against what seems to be impossible, depressed, downhearted, hopeless or helpless, overpowered by life. What do we do when life bullies us into a corner? Where do we turn when trouble trips us? Where well, there is good news. And that is why the Bible is there. There's good news in the Bible. There's good news, Jesus is saying to his disciples. He told them that the real would not have to fear. How did he put it? I will not leave you comfortless. That's the King James Version of his words. I will not leave you desolate. That's the Revised Standard Version. But the New Revised Standard Version finally gets it right. It is Jesus saying, I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. John 14 verse 18. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. So the Greek word used in our text is orphanos. From which we get the word orphan. That's the word that inspired this sermon. What others of thought it opens up for us? The word means literally without a father. Without a father. It was also used of disciples and students benefit of the presence of the beloved teacher. Plato said that when Socrates died, his disciples thought that they would have to spend their rest of their lives forlorn as children benefit of a father. In Jesus' own days, the disciples of famous rabbis were said to be orphaned at the death of their teachers and spiritual leaders. It was a very common usage in the word orphan conjures all sorts of images. As we listen to today's message, we encounter the resurrected Christ, the one who has traveled over the cross and the grave, the one who stands eternal before the throne of our Heavenly Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who says to us as he did to the disciples, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you alone. I will not abandon you. That's the Christ we worship. You are not orphans, he said. By no means we are children of a divine parent who cares for us infinitely. Even the hairs of your head are numbered. He knows everything about you. He sees what rides in your heart. Spiritual x-ray, he sees what troubles you. So he says, I will not leave you as orphans. Let me just explain a bit about orphans. Now that's a word we don't hear very often anymore. It's not a popular word. In fact, we try to avoid the thought that orphans even exist anymore. And yet it is estimated that the South China Sea tsunami that struck at Christmas uh, some time, few years ago, left us as many as 1.5 million children orphaned. Just think, 1.5 million children left without parents from that one tragedy. And there's more children like them who are made orphans each day. And yet we know that it isn't just children without parents who are orphans. There are countless others who feel abandoned, who feel alone without help, who are left without guidance or comfort, who, who feel left orphans as well. They can be like the following people. Think about a 55-year-old factory worker is laid off when the Kanban closes due to COVID-19, leaving him with no prospect of another job. Too old and too weary to consider retraining without skills that can be retooled, he feels alone. An unemployed and living off pension funds that will soon run out. Who is there to say to him, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not abandon you. Or about an 80-year-old alone at home, 55 years of marriage. Her spouse died in this coronavirus pandemic, no longer with her. She knows off in front of the television set and half eaten frozen meal cold in front of her. She is alone in a house too big for her children. For her. Children with their lives, they are living in different towns. 
Who is there to say to her, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not abandon you. All of the AIDS ravaged youth around the world. His errant lifestyle has brought shame on his family and driven his friends away. His body is dying and he lies alone in pain. For him and for the millions of others throughout the world who face this dreaded disease, who is there to say to him, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not abandon you. It may be the teenager who is different from the rest, the wife or husband whose spouse has left them, the businessman whose business is falling, and the parent whose child has rebelled and left home, or any of the countless others in the world around us who feel and without hope, rejected and lonely. November 2019, the virus we now we know as the coronavirus or COVID-19 appeared in Wuhan, China. Today, nearly six months later, that same virus is affecting people around the world. As we view the world from our television sets, as we often see a global paranormal of death and fear, as people rush the markets for toilet paper and food, as we remain locked inside of our doors for fear of uncontrollable virus, invader over which we have no control, we need to know that God sees our plight and will be there to lift us from it, to provide us peace and comfort through it. We need to know that God sees our plight and will be there to lift us from it, to provide us peace and comfort. Today, isn't just Corona, COVID-19 that we need to worry about. Not just our physical health, but the mental, emotional, spiritual health of the people in our communities and around the world. We are still with the upswing of devastating attacker that is trapping us fearful in our homes and costing money, jobs, relationships, and certain future. To them and to us, there is good news this morning. For there is one who is here to say, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not abandon you. That person is there. We all need reassurance during times of stress and strife, even in Christians. This, time, this is a time when we not only celebrate our discipleship, but recognize our humanness. It's okay to feel afraid. It's okay to feel worried. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to feel down. Because God cares. Even people of God People who know God, follow Jesus, feel anchored in their faith, believe in the resurrection, need reassurance from God in times like this. This is one of those times we need that, need that reassurance. In the gospel reading today, Jesus sits with the disciples in the upper room. The candles of the Passover meal have been short and it is time to go. One disciple has already fled the gathering. His betrayer is a shock to all of them. Another disciple's design is predicted, and the pain of the cross awaits them all. And in the midst of this uncertain gathering, Jesus reaches out to them in love. Listen again to what he says in various verses. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you in just a little while. The world will not see me again, but you will. For I will live again and will too. And I will ask the Father and will give you another counselor who will never leave you, a counselor who is the Holy Spirit. I will not leave you. I will not abandon you. I will send you a counselor, an advocate, a comforter, a friend who will care for you, who will offer you hope where there is no none to be found, help when you are helpless, comfort when you are, can find none, and life in the face of death is there to give you. So the Holy Spirit is God's gift to us in baptism. The Holy Spirit is God's presence in life. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us and the promise of the faithful. So the Holy Spirit needs us forth then as messengers of God's love to the poor, the unemployed, the young and the elderly, the sick and rejected, the unhappy, the sorrowful, the lonely and the dying. Who is there to say to them, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not abandon you. Well, God says it can be us. For we are the ones whom God entrusts with good news. We are the ones sent forth with his love. 
We can also preach love. We can show love. Put love in action. Showing that God is there for us. We are the ones God called us. We are the ones with the foot. God doesn't have the foot to run around. We are the ones with the hands. God is using us in those numerous things to do. With numerous things to do. I will not leave you often. I am coming to you. And in the strength of that promise, Christians have lived and loved and died knowing that they were not alone, that we are never alone in the struggles of life. In the struggle to make this world a better, more decent, more human and more human world, God has called us to do something. He said, I will not leave you alone. We are never alone. For Christ continues coming to be with us is a blessed and most glorious fact. He came at Bethlehem. He came to be the best side of the sick and dying in Galilee. He came to the tomb of Lazarus at, at Bethany. He came to us as well. When we are in need, when we have lost our hope, Christ is there to give us hope. He came to the disciples in the upper room. Ever after his death and resurrection, he came in the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He has continued to come to those who love and save him down through the ages. He continues to come to us through the medium of sermon, song, sacrament, as when we gather for worship week by week. And he will come to us again at the end of our lives to take us to be with him forever. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe in me. In my father's house are so many mentioned. So which means... He will come and take one by one. He will take us one by one to where he is. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may also be. John 14, verse 1 to 3. Every time we face death, destruction, despair, devastation, we call upon the Holy Spirit to renew us to refresh us, to set us on our feet again as we live in a time when faith is needed no more than ever. This is the time we are in. This is the period we are in. We are called to open ourselves to the working of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes passive Christians are afraid to do this, but as today's gospel says, the main task of the Spirit is to remind us of everything Jesus taught about the Father. So we need the Holy Spirit to be part of our lives. We need to open to the work of the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit can do what he's supposed to do to remind us of what God has done. It is there to remind us of what the Bible is saying. It is there to convict us, to guide us, to protect us. That is what we need. But we must come into his presence. We must draw near to him. That's why we open God's word. That's why we start the Bible. That's why this now time of devotion and prayer is so important. For in them we come closer to Christ. In them we draw near to our God. And in coming to him, we enter the presence of God and God's love makes us well. For he came to heal the broken heart. He can feel the emptiness of lost. He can comfort the lonely and strengthen the weak. Sometimes we do feel like a motherless child. Sometimes we feel outmatched by life, but we have a father who loves us. Not only will us, who knows us by name, who calls us by name, he knows each and every one of us. We've got a father who cares, and the Holy Spirit is there to help us. We have a savior who triumphed over death. We have the Holy Spirit, God's presence, to bring faith to life. And because of that, we have the peace of God that passes all understanding to keep our heart and mind in Christ. Amen to that church. We have got the Holy Spirit who is there to keep us in our position. We are not alone. Jesus has not left in the houses. He is there in your house, in your lockdown. He is there with you. When you are afraid of everything that is outside, Christ is with you there, in that very room. An advocate has been sent who will defend us who will teach us, encourage us, renew us, and unite us. Pray that the Spirit comes to your place that you might go out and reach others. Pray that the Holy Spirit is part of your life. Pray that the Holy Spirit is also in your environment, in your own house. Let the Holy Spirit take control of your life. 
Today I will urge all of us to reclaim the Holy Spirit in our religious life because after all, it is through the Holy Spirit that the Father and the Son come to us. So I just want to urge you, take time. It is time for you to come before God. It is time for you to reflect upon your life. Normally I don't make altar calls. But I would like to make an altar call for you now to stand up wherever you are and come before the throne of God in your own home, in your own house. And kneel before the Lord and ask for the Holy Spirit just to be part of your life. Ask for the Holy Spirit so that it can guide you. Ask for the Holy Spirit to control you. Do not be afraid of anything for Jesus is with you. He is always with us. We are no longer orphans because our Father is there with us. The Holy Spirit. Let me pray for you. As you kneel down or as you stand up, I will pray for you so that God can take control of your life. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Lord of all, your son Jesus reassured his disciples, fearful for the future, that your spirit will be with them in good times and bad. The Apostle Paul showed us to the Athenians by seeking common ground with them, pointing to the familiar as to encourage and prepare them for what was unfamiliar. We pray today for those who daily work to find common ground, bring reassurance to those facing an uncertain future. I ask the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ, to be part and parcel of every believer. We believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus Christ. Let every Christian who calls you by name be filled by the Holy Spirit so that when they talk, it is not them who talk, but it is the Spirit in them. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me, says Paul. Father, I just want to thank you. May you anoint us today with the power from above. May you anoint us, Lord Jesus Christ, so that when we leave our homes, going out, the Holy Spirit will be just shining upon our faces. People will be able to see Christ in us Heavenly Father, be with us. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful time you've given us. We thank you that uh, you love us and you continue to look after us. As we go out, Lord Jesus Christ, from our own houses, Let us preach that we are no longer orphans, that Christ lives in us. Let us witness that for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Heavenly Father, we surrender ourselves before you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. 
Amen. So thank you, Johnson, for that uh, powerful and wonderful message this morning. And um, I hope that uh, every one of you uh, was able to uh, find something of value to yourself personally and for your walk with God during this coming week. Uh, can I just remind everyone, uh, please, if you could remember to uh, give. Uh, the church still costs money to run. So we've still got to pay the rates. We've still got to pay the electricity. We've still got to pay all the costs that we used to pay. Um, and so we really need your support to, uh, to keep the church running and to uh, also keep uh, Reverend Johnson's livelihood intact because uh, we can't have him and his family going hungry, can we? <laughs> Johnson's nodding. <laughs> anyway, I want to pray for the offering. Uh, for those who have given, uh, I want to thank you so much for doing so. And uh, let's pray for that offering and ask God's blessing upon it. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to uh, pause now and to give you thanks. We want to uh, say that we recognize that all good gifts come from you. As we have rehearsed uh, in times past, we live and move and have our being in you. Our life comes from you. Our sustenance comes from you. All things that we have come from you. And so we give you our thanks and we give you our praise. Lord, as we give this morning, as we give during the week, whenever we give, Lord, whether it's in our money or in our time, Lord, we thank you for the privilege of doing so. And we pray, Father, that you would multiply all of these to your work so that your work may continue in this place, so that the people who we serve in this community can continue to see us being lights on the hill. That light should not be hidden. So Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give to you and thank you for the privilege of doing so. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.